Hello, everyone. My name is John Palowich. This talk will be about debiasing GNNs, and the original work I'll talk about is in collaboration with Brian Perosi. I also want to mention this is my first time doing a formal pre-recorded talk. It's a pretty weird format for me. I feel like I give much better talks when I can see and interact with the audience in real time. So I hope all of you, future you, are enjoying yourselves at NeurIPS, and in particular at this NeurIPS Expo. Let's see how this goes. So, as I just mentioned, this talk will be about debiasing GNNs, in particular, debiasing embedding layers of GNNs. We all know and have heard throughout this expo that graph embeddings from GNNs have many uses. They are transformations and predictive layers in GNN models themselves, and they are also used in downstream applications as features in other models, say, or for visualization. We also know that graphs have complex clustering properties that often correlate with external node attributes or metadata. So a very current problem area in machine learning on graphs is how to debias node embeddings from node metadata or how to learn embeddings that are, invariant, uh, that are invariant to the metadata. This is useful, say, if you are trying to build a graph learning system that is blind to sensitive features of nodes like personal demographic data, such as age or gender, or geographic data like county. So, this talk will cover some of our work in this area. And as it is such a recent problem, there has also been some concurrent research to our work, which I'll briefly cover right now. Uh, first, one approach adapts ideas in adversarial learning and domain invariance to the graph setting. Essentially, the idea is to train a separate adversarial head to predict the sensitive metadata that you're trying to debias from, but train the rest of the model to be as poor at that task as possible. Uh, second, another completely different approach is to somehow debias the random walk input to the common embedding algorithms that normally don't debias from metadata. The idea there is to visit nodes in random walks with equal probability with respect to the sensitive attributes. Our work in this space constitutes a third diverse approach, which has two parts. First, we learn an embedding of the metadata itself which essentially encodes precisely how the graph clusters by the metadata. Then we debias the graph embeddings by projecting them to be orthogonal to those metadata embeddings. So next I'll dive into the details of those steps and then show how they work on some debiasing tasks. So as just mentioned, the first component to our approach is to learn embeddings of the metadata with respect to the graph. And to do this, we learn a transformation of the raw metadata and concatenate it with the embedding layer that we are trying to debias. This creates a separable joint representation of the graph that can be decomposed into a topology effect and a metadata effect. So this was actually our first stab at an overall solution to the graph embeddings debiasing problem. Our hypothesis was that if we were able to encode the metadata in a concatenated representation space, that that metadata space would encode all the metadata information and naturally to bias the topology representation space. Then a user of that approach could remove the metadata dimensions in a downstream application if desired, and even use those dimensions for other purposes like visualization or qualitative model understanding. To a certain extent, it actually worked that way, but we found that the topology space was not fully biased by this technique, as I'll explain now through an application. So we applied that joint metadata embedding approach to a political blog graph. The nodes in this graph are political blogs. The edges in the graph are the hyperlinks that one blog links to another. And the nodes have just two attributes, a binary association with one of the two main political parties in the United States. As a baseline, we first embedded the graph by applying the glove algorithm to random walks from the graph, which is essentially a variant of deep walk. Uh, this produced two clearly defined polar clusters, and a classifier was able to predict the political blogs from the embeddings with 95% F1. So this just shows that the political blog signal is uh, very present in the graph without any debiasing. Then we applied the glove model again, but as, uh, as shown in the last slide, we concurrently trained a separable metadata embedding space. Um, we found that the remaining topology embeddings Cluster, still clustered by political affiliation, but somewhat less strongly. Uh, so this partially confirmed our orig original hypothesis about the effect of learning metadata embeddings. 
Um, however, as I just mentioned, the classifier was still able to predict political affiliation from the topology bedding, embeddings with 88% F1. We discovered that this was due to an effect called metadata leakage, in which metadata information is still captured by topology embeddings since the two spaces are trained concurrently. We proved that this is actually a general effect for embedding models that include metadata dimensions. So we knew we needed to um, get around this somehow and solve this harder problem. Um, so yeah, we needed something stronger than this diagram right here, which is just a simple decomposition of the embedding space. Um, this brings me to the second part of our solution, which is to orthogonalize the topology embeddings away from the metadata embeddings during training. At every training step, we project the topology embeddings onto the null space of the metadata, which results in exact linear debiasing. We also include a tuning parameter bounded in the range from zero to one, which corresponds to the level of the projection. So this constitutes our complete devising approach, which we call Monet for metadata orthogonal node embedding training. Uh, the complete algorithm is as follows. The input to Monet is the target topology embeddings to device and the metadata embeddings to inform the devising. In the forward pass through the model, the null space of the metadata embeddings are computed and the topology embeddings are projected onto that hyperplane. In the backward pass, the gradient descent update to the topology embeddings is computed and similarly projected onto the same hyperplane. Uh, so those two steps respectively are the blue and yellow lines in that graphic there on the right. This is all the training time procedure, which allows adaptively learning the best topology embeddings in a, in a debiased hyperplane orthogonal to the metadata. Um, and as mentioned before, we introduce a relaxation to Bonnet, which scales the level of the orthogonal projection. Um, when the, as you can see here, when the tuning parameter is equal to one, this corresponds to standard Monet or just complete debiasing, complete projection onto the null space. Then the, pr the parameter can be tuned continuously down to zero, which corresponds to no debiasing and is equivalent to the underlying algorithm Monet is operating on. Okay, so how does Monet work on the blogs graph? Uh, graph? After applying Monet, the classifier that um, we applied earlier to the, the more naive methods um, predicted political party no better than random, which means the Monet embeddings were completely debiased uh, from that attribute. Um, also, uh, visually, we can see that the debiased embeddings uh, trained with Monet um, results in the, the groups somewhat smeared together in 2D PCA space. So we extended this application into an experiment to compare Monet against baselines. The baselines that perform some version of devising were the adversarial approach I mentioned earlier, uh, secondly, fair walk, and thirdly, the glove model with only the metadata embeddings, but no Monet projection. Our more standard baselines without any debiasing at all were deep walk and glove, which are both random walk based embedding algorithms and don't use the metadata. Then the experiment proceeded as follows. We embed the graph with every method, and then we train a linear classifier on each embedding set to predict blog affiliation. As I alluded to in the earlier examples, the accuracy of that classifier is in some ways an inverse success metric for debiasing. The better a classifier can predict political affiliation or the sensitive attribute from the embeddings, the more biased the embeddings are. So using this metric, we found that only Monet debiases embeddings enough so that predictive accuracy on the sensitive attribute is consistent with the random baseline. All other debiasing approaches resulted in surprisingly high classifier accuracy. The adversarial method was the best among those baselines, but still produced embeddings that were able to predict political affiliation with 80% F1. Um, we also ran a, a completely different second experiment, which involved debiasing graph embeddings from a shilling attack in a recommendation network. We started with the classic movie lens data set, which can be 
translated as a bipartite network of movie viewers and their ratings of movies. So the edges in the bipartite network are the ratings. To run the experiment, we randomly chose 10 videos to be targets of what is known as a shilling attack, um, which is when the uh, movies um, via ratings are artificially inflated um, to be more popular than they otherwise would be without the attack. So to accomplish this attack, we simulated some spam users and had them rate a set of targeted videos highly to create artificial similarity between those videos. We then folded the bipartite graph along the user dimension to train embeddings of the video graph. As metadata for debiasing methods, we hid 50% of the ground truth spam ratings and encoded the other 50% as video metadata. So in this experiment, we were able to measure the trade-off between debiasing and embedding efficacy using two metrics. First, to measure debiasing, we count the number of targeted videos in each of the top 20 nearest embedding distance neighbors of the other target videos. Since the shilling user's intent is to create artificial similarity between those videos, the lower this count, the better an embedding method has debiased the shilling signal. Secondly, on the other hand, we compute the mean reciprocal rank of the embedding distance neighbors of all videos with respect to their neighbors in the random walk training data. The higher this metric over random baseline MRR, the better the embedding method has encoded the graph signal. So this is a measure of embedding accuracy. Um, so the, these two metrics trade off. The more we, in general, um, the more bias a method has, um, the more it is allowed to freely um, encode the graph signal, so the accuracy should be higher. What we found is that only Monet can completely debias the shilling attack and still achieves embedding distance rank accuracy eight times better than random. Also, tuning Monet's projection strength parameter provides a smooth path from perfect debiasing to non-debiasing accuracy. Um, finally, I want to compare a bit more to the related work I mentioned earlier. Uh, one caveat to the Monet approach is that it only solves linear associations and linear sources of bias. However, unlike other approaches, it guarantees uh, perfect debiasing of, of this sort and does so with a scalable training time correction. Um, one thing I want to point out also is the reason we saw Fairwalk perform poorly is that the method cannot debias nodes which have all their neighbors from one class of metadata. There's just no way to correct for that in the random walks. As for adversarial debiasing, that approach can handle more complex types of associations in theory. But in practice, the hyperparameters involved with adversarial training make this approach difficult to achieve consistent results in practice. We see that even when a nonlinear classifier is trained on debiased embeddings to predict political blog affiliation, Monet embeddings are still, sorry, are still the most debiased and adversarial training actually does somewhat poorly compared with the rest. All right, uh, so to finally sum up, our future work in this space includes extending and making a principled approach to nonlinear debiasing. We also want to think about how to handle higher dimensional metadata and apply Monet to deeper, layer, uh, deeper GNNs or additional layers of the GNN instead of just the predictive layer. Uh, I also want to mention that Monet will appear at ASNM 2020 next month and is currently available on the archive. Uh, thank you all for, your, for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of the talks.